before the literal flaming hellscape that has become a reality descended upon us, 2019 was actually a pretty good year for video games. From indie to AAA, we actually got some pretty great titles. Katana Zero, Fire Emblem Three Houses, The Outer Worlds, and Thumb. Few games, however, were as divisive as From Software's newest sadistic roller coaster and 2019's Game of the Year, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. There was immediate hype surrounding this game upon announcement, which only grew once actual gameplay was revealed, indicating that this wasn't a Bloodborne sequel as was initially thought, but instead a brand new title. What's more, it appeared as though it had a very different direction, abandoning many staples of the Souls genre like stat point allocation and stamina bars for an entirely new combat system plus a complete overhaul to gameplay in general by adding stealth and verticality into the mix. Things ended up taking a really weird turn when the game finally came out though, because in true From Software fashion, this game is hard. Like, really hard. Sparking articles on accessibility in gaming, hard. Which is a really important topic, and I don't want to dismiss or belittle anyone who has the opinion that Sekiro and games like it are just too hard. But I also want to talk about what it's able to accomplish in the player because it's so hard what it's forced to teach you as a result, and how it accomplishes the task. In fact, my hope is that maybe for some of you who have given up on the game because of how punishing it can be, try taking another crack at it. Because the experience I walked away with when I completed it myself put me on a high that I am literally writing this very moment as I write this. I'd even go so far to say beating this game can have the potential to foster growth in areas of your life that you could even put on a resume. And I'm not talking about these generic exaggerations lots of us tend to use either. I'm talking about soft skills and mental conditioning that could actually help you long after you turn the PS4 off. The gameplay of Sekiro seems pretty straightforward at first. You get your sword and eventually your go-go gadget arm. You get your objective and they basically tell you to go to town. As you progress though, the depth of it all becomes much more apparent. Essentially, you have two choices when engaging the enemies you encounter throughout the world. You can be a stealthy ninja assassin, or you can assert true dominance and attack head on. The intricacies of these two approaches are really interesting, but first let's focus on direct combat. Enemy encounters in Sekiro force you into a precarious ebb and flow of offense and defense, and knowing when, and importantly how to switch between the two, is absolutely key in overcoming the various trials the game throws at you. It does give you options in the form of items in your shinobi prosthetic with its various tools, but trust me when I tell you that your experience with this game will live and die based on how well you can master this basic flow. To explain, the way that combat works in this game is that you have to attack the enemy to drain their health or their posture meter, which is basically the defensive stance. Once done, the enemy will be left open for a death blow. What makes things interesting, however, is the parry mechanic. You see, in order to fill up the enemy's posture meter, you need to block their attacks with perfect timing right as it's about to hit you in order to perform a parry or deflection. Failing to do so at the right time will successfully block the attack, but will fill up your own posture meter, eventually leaving you open for big damage yourself. Performing this special block or parry, however, will fill your enemy's posture meter instead, turning Sekiro into literally the coolest rhythm game I have ever played. This is pretty awesome on its own, but to make things even more interesting, the enemies can also throw out three different types of unblockable attack. Thrusts, sweeps, and grabs, each with their own specific responses. This mechanic shines brightest during boss and mini boss fights. These elements all come together to form a situation in which you, the player, are on a high stakes test of precision and focus. On the one hand, you're paying attention to the flow of battle to know when to attack and when to block to fill the enemy's posture, while on the other hand, also having to keep an eye out for the red kanji of death and, within a split second, must analyze the enemy's telegraphed movements and determine what kind of attack you're about to be confronted with and how to respond in order to maintain the flow of battle in your favor and, of course, to avoid the big damage. Now, what I just explained may sound like a nightmare to some of you, and that's likely because it is. Video over. But basically, the game throws you into an extremely tense situation and then adds another layer of uncertainty that you just have to mentally prepare yourself for, requiring you to be calm under pressure and to be able to analyze and respond to new information on your feet while staying in control of the situation. And if you've ever worked at a job that had the words fast-paced environment in the job description, you likely know exactly what I'm talking about. 
Now, like I mentioned earlier, you have options available to you in terms of how you want to face an obstacle, either directly or through stealth, and this bursts the game wide open in terms of possibilities. I've seen many people play this game, but nobody ever seems to approach a problem the same way. And it seems that this too was by design. In an interview with head developer Hidetaka Miyazaki, he mentions this when he says, There are lots of different ways to approach a battle, such as stealth or using your arm tools, attacking from above for example. Some of your ninja tools can take advantage of an enemy's weaknesses as well. Or, if you want, you can just go straight in with your sword. There are lots of different things you can do that will help you in battle. The game is designed in such a way that even if you're not insanely good at the game, you can figure out how to get through it if you think about it and play it smart. Sekiro is absolutely a tough game, but it doesn't just present you with insurmountable odds. It challenges you by giving you everything you need and then telling you to solve the problem. Not to mention, you also get a couple of do-overs just in case you make a mistake or two along the way in the form of resurrections. Every challenge is presented in a way where if you find yourself running into a wall, simply shifting your perspective or changing up your strategy can give you enough of an advantage to succeed and progress. Miyazaki even makes it a point to mention that even if you aren't very skilled at this type of video game, simply pausing to reassess is typically enough to get by. For somebody of my age, I've had the privilege to work in a fairly diverse number of fields, and I can definitely say that being able to appropriately analyze a situation and come up with a reasonable solution given the tools that you have available is an important skill to have regardless of what industry you're in. Sekiro doesn't just test those fast twitch muscles of yours, it's also a legitimate exercise in problem solving. One mistake could easily lead to a game over screen, so thinking before you act is crucial. The enemy types are diverse, so adapting your approach and combat style on the go becomes essential. These aspects are all built into the core of the gameplay itself, but present an approach to challenge that's easily applied in all kinds of job settings. Customer service is a huge example of this because, as many in the industry might agree, customers and clients don't always know what it is they're reaching out to you for. Often, they present you with their problem, and it's your job to find the solution piecing together their account of the situation with your own knowledge and resources available to you, and coming up with the best solution available. It's not always easy or predictable, but the skill transfer is pretty similar, and the more you flex those skills, the easier and more natural they feel until they become second nature. Now the next thing I want to touch on is actually something that even fans of this type of punishing game have criticized it for, but hopefully I can explain how it can actually help you, the player. And once again, it all goes back to combat. In the very beginning of the video, I mentioned how Sekiro deviates from a lot of other games developed by From Software. One such deviation is that these other games let you customize your character, giving you a degree of control over the gameplay itself. If you wanted a mage who could fight at distance, or a strong tanky character that could wield the giant weapons, you could do that, but here all you get is the wolf. And with him, only one type of combat. I know I just went on and on about how diverse this game can be, but I'll admit that when it comes specifically to combat itself, there is a clear correct way to go about it. Like I described earlier with the health and the posture and the death blows and parrying and whatnot. In fact, when I first learned that this game was going to be centered around blocking with pinpoint timing, I nearly wrote this game off entirely. I'd encountered similar mechanics in other games and promptly had my behind handed to me. That kind of thing is honestly just too stressful and frustrating to master. Which is what I thought until I actually played the game. It's a little hard to describe, but if I were to try to put it simply, Sekiro pushes you towards mastery through its own gameplay. Every enemy has its own posture meter, and every enemy can be deflected enough to fill said posture meter. I mean, there are some exceptions, but for the most part, since there's only that one approach to head-on combat, especially with bosses and mini-bosses, the only choice you really have to improve and progress through the game is to get good. Oh, oh, wait, hold on, slow down, don't hit that dislike button just yet. I know that's a really loaded phrase in the Soulsborne community, and I've got this whole anti-elitism thing going on, but basically what I mean is that instead of other games which mainly offer rewards in the form of items and perks, the game rewards you through mastery of its own mechanics. At a glance, this was the very thing I wanted to avoid, but the game actually helps you to improve your level of proficiency by presenting you with expertly placed skill checks in the form of those bosses and mini bosses I mentioned a second ago that encourage you to hone specific skills until by the end, you're capable of handling anything the AI can throw at you. I guess what I'm saying is, 
Playing Sekiro literally feels like learning a new skill. Much like riding a bike, this game tests your resilience and perseverance, but most importantly, it has the potential to increase your confidence by displaying your ability to learn and apply what you've learned in real time. Starting a new job can be pretty intimidating. Oftentimes, there's a learning curve during the first few weeks as you get to know how things operate. Lots of employers look for candidates that aren't intimidated at the thought of learning new things, since procedures and expectations often get adjusted over time. Getting comfortable with having to learn new things and being confident in yourself enough to take them on is a huge advantage over the competition. And as a bonus, that confidence can even have the potential to shine through during interviews as well. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is something that may not apply to a lot of Sekiro players and is pretty hard to make into a point that you can add to your resume skill list. But at this point, this video's premise is getting pretty contrived anyways, so uh, why not? You're already here anyways. Have you ever been in the middle of something? Maybe it's a competition or a sport, for example. And you get that in the zone feeling? Where all distraction and sense of time seem to get tuned out and all your focus and attention is solely on the task in front of you and you feel like you're performing the best you possibly can. Well, there's actually a name for this. In psychology, it's called the state of flow. Basically, whenever we do anything, we have a limited resource of attention that we have to divide up and assign to different things. What we see, what we hear, distractions outside of our immediate task, etc. But when in flow, all your attention is strictly focused on what's in front of you. Even to the point of losing your own sense of time. I've always thought that this was something that we have little to no control over. Something that just happens when the stars align and you get your anime protagonist moment. But in actuality, you can learn to control and access this state consciously. There's a lot of info out there on how to do this, but at the risk of oversimplifying, it all boils down to four main things. Finding a task you enjoy, making sure that it's challenging, not too easy, not too difficult, have a clear and well-defined goal, and try to eliminate all distractions. Being able to freely enter the state of flow is pretty useful. Not just because it increases your productivity and overall performance, but it's actually just a fulfilling experience in and of itself. Knowing that you can pull out your potential and operate at the best of your abilities is a really rewarding experience. It feels like a form of self-mastery. Personally speaking, playing this game checked off all those boxes for me. And by the end of it, I felt like I had total control over not just the game, but myself. I access a level of zen heretofore unseen. In fact, it's even been said that being able to access the flow state and taking advantage of it in the workplace even has the potential to lead to increased job satisfaction. Now, if you made it this far into the video, then thank you for bearing with me and my forced analogies. Of course, I don't actually expect anyone to use their accomplishments in a video game to emphasize their soft skills to a company they want to work for, but that doesn't mean I'm entirely kidding either. Whether it be a new language, driving manual, picking up a new sport or instrument, challenging yourself to get out of your comfort zone to do something that scares you or intimidates you can offer all kinds of benefits and new perspectives that have the potential to add to your life. In the year of our Lord 2021, I think it's safe to say that with the rise of competitive gaming and the ever-increasing number of video game streamers on Twitch and other platforms, we should finally be able to put the whole video games rot your brain argument to bed. I love trying new things, so I was pleasantly shocked by how good it felt to master this game. Look, I know Sekiro is a commitment and a pretty decent time sink, not to mention if you don't already have a PS4, it's a pretty decent investment too. And many people, understandably, don't even enjoy this kind of game anyways. But as you've probably guessed by now, I'm not so much encouraging you to play Sekiro as much as I'm encouraging you to do something challenging. A lot of the time, we let fear and intimidation get between us and some genuinely beneficial life experiences. And that almost happened to me with this exact game. It's part of the reason why I even started this channel in the first place. I'm glad that I challenged myself though with both of these because as weird as it sounds, I really do feel more competent and confident in myself. I've literally observed the skills I've gained and grown from this game translating into my real life. And it wasn't because I beat a video game, but more so because I beat an aspect of myself through beating this game. So, go play Sekiro. Or don't. You may not actually get any of the supposed resume boosters if you do, but hey, who knows? We're all isolated anyway, so why not start that project you've been thinking about or write that book you've had your mind on for years? Chances are you may thank yourself for it. <laughs>